morning everyone welcome to the webinar on digital transformation with mobile connect in this webinar we are going to discuss about digital transformation and mobile connect also how these technologies could help you to enhance your customer experience so my name is Sagara and I am a director at WSO2 mainly work on WSO2 identity server solution uh, for this seminar uh, for this webinar uh, the Gayan will be a co-presenter he's a senior software engineer and also from identity uh, server team so about before we talk about uh, the topic as uh, so a brief introduction about WSO2 WSO2 is an uh, open source middle company and all of our softwares are 100% free and open source. And also, uh, all our softwares are based on Apache 2 license. And also, our softwares are built based on a componentized and modular architecture based on WSO2 Carbon. So here is our uh, product platform. So we have products in API management, identity and access management, device management, and integration. So about the uh, WSO Identity Server. W Identity Service uh, open source identity and access management solution. It supports both customer identity and access management and workforce identity and access management. We, uh, it supports large number of open standards and there is no vendor locking with the uh, WSO Identity Server. We have uh, very large scale deployment over 1 million users across the globe. Some of them are in financial sector, some of them are e-government, etc. Additionally, we have 14 plus identity server connectors. Identity server also support for multi-tenancy and support for support very extensible uh, extension model. With that, so let's move into today's topic. So digital transformation with mobile connect. So what is digital transformation? Should you care? Okay, so this is a, a Twitter circulate a few weeks ago by World Economic Forum. So this is what happened within a 60 second or within a one minute. So as you can see, there are 70,000 Netflix videos being watched and 3.5 million search queries on Google and 900,000 logins in Facebook. So you can imagine the size of today's digital economy. So sometimes back, digitalized services or digital delivery channels are considered as something to be nice. But nowadays, that has changed rapidly. Now, no business can survive without delivering or without delivery channels and without engaging customers to internet or digital transformation. So that is the reality. So this is another example. Traditionally, there are some sectors those considered as it's hard or impossible to move into the digital uh, channels. One area is fashion items. For example, people believe, people, especially business believe, people will go to stores in order to try out clothes, shoes, etc. But now uh, the digital transformation is breaking those barriers. This is one of the good example from uh, Amazon Prime. So that means, so nobody can avoid this digital transformation uh, phenomenon. In the same time, the customers don't want just a digitalized service. Instead, they want personalization. So if you look at any of the successful online business, you can see they have personalized their offerings. So if, if, you, if I go to a bookstore, I want uh, the books 
which are interest to me and also so depend on my age depend on my uh, interested and depend on of uh, my uh, previous uh, experiences with the store the content should be personalized so this is that is a key so basically in order to provide this personalized experience you need to identify the customer in summary the customer identification is the key of your digital business so how to do that so in traditionally there are two requirements first you should enable users to register via with your application basically what we call as allow people to create accounts that is the first requirement second requirement people should able to identify or in technical terms authenticate with your uh, website or the or, the, or your application using uh, traditionally using username password so these are the two main requirement in order to identify your customers so in the meantime so if you look at this is this this is not just a, a solution this create this create a headache for customers so when you when you say password management if you just look at password management if you if you, if you just forget all other aspect like use onboarding to uh, new account creation etc so if you just focus on password management it it has lot of complexities so first thing is too many password so this one this is not a new problem so each and every business when they have an online offering they ask to register so end of day you have to remember the hundred of passwords so it's really hard to remember in password and other challenges renewing password then time to time you have to reset the forgotten password and each and every application or this online application they have different password policies so time to time you have to pick some randomized password for the business side it's there's another challenge you have to securely store and encrypt the password so you can't leak this password and if there is a password leakage happen you have to deal with that so these are the very complex password management complexities so so in summary what we can see is we have it's we have we need some kind of a balance so basically in order to provide personalized customer experience you need to identify the your customers but to do that when you introduce a complex password management system it will reduce your uh, user experience so how to balance this so that is a, a question of or that is what we are going to mainly discuss during this webinar okay now let me put your question so more than 10 years now mobile providers so whenever we send a short message or whenever we take a phone call they authenticate us through a secure sim they authenticate us and they don't ask any username or password so these mobile operators somehow manage to authenticate their subscribers or users without any of without getting into any of this password management complexities so this is technically what they have done but we are not going to look at the the technical aspect of the mobile authentication now if we can now if we can use uh, the the same approach that the mobile operators used to authenticate their users for the business world that will solve most of these password management related problems so the gsma mobile connect is a perfect solution so this is a secure digital authentication service from gsma so it's bridge the mobile 
operators authentication mechanism with the commercial world. So now your application, it could be your uh, the mobile application, it could be your web-based uh, web portal that can leverage uh, this GSM mobile connect in order to identify and in order to authenticate your customers. So this is what happened. This is a very simplified flow. So it has two phases. So basically, uh, in this sample, you can see there is a shopping cart. So in shopping cart, as usual, you have a login button. Within this login button, uh, you can it, it, uh, the application asks to enter a mobile number. But if it is from a mobile device, uh, the application can identify the uh, the mobile ID or the device ID, the mobile subscribe ID through the uh, connection or through the SIM card. Uh, so somehow one, you have to present the phone number uh, to the GSMA discovery IP. Then this discovery API return you the uh, mobile operator's identity provider. So once you get this identity provider, you can ask or you basically you can send the authentication request. Then these mobile operators uh, use their the mobile authentication mechanism. Basically, they provide the consent to your the user's mobile phone and get them authenticated with the mobile operator. So once it's successful, it will return a response uh, kind of a identification data back to your applications. This means uh, without creating any user account by manually entering any data or without ask users to provide username and password, you can easily authenticate or identify your customers. So that is the uh, advantage of this uh, GSMA mobile credit. So it support uh, two levels of assurance. So the first, either you can uh, ask, uh, in simple cases, you can ask, um, it will prompt uh, consent on user device, like mobile phone, and they can enter a number, or you can ask a pre-agreed PIN code. So this support uh, level of assurance two and level of assurance three. So, and now let's look at the practical side of this. So if you have a, web application or mobile application, how you could uh, integrate with the uh, GSMA mobile connect. So they have a SDK. So this SDK support for level, several set of languages. So you have to embed. So you have to embed this SDK within your applications. Then it application, uh, sorry, this SDK facilitate your application to discover the mobile operator and also to send uh, and receive authentication request with the uh, particular mobile operator. So th this, this is how you should uh, connect, uh, mobile connect with your application. Now, uh, why WSIS in the picture? So what WSO Identity Server try to offer? So basically, WS or to identity server, we have a authentication connector. So this authentic connect, authentication connector further simplify your integration with the GSMA mobile connect. And also it extend the usability of mobile connect. So let's look at some of this pattern and some of the usage. Okay, the first one is uh, when you use this, uh, WS to identity server connector, you don't need to uh, couple with the mobile connect SDK. So for example, if you take a Java web application, so you have to get uh, Java SDK, either as a Maven, Ant or some uh, build tool, and you have to embed with your application. But this uh, identity server mobile connect connector eliminate that requirement. So which means, you don't need to couple with the mobile connect SDK. That's the uh, first advantage. Second advantage, 
in order to leverage this mobile connect with your application, you don't need to do any code level changes. WSO Identity Server offer the zero code change approach. Third one, you can use uh, this mobile connect as a factor or as a one factor of the multi-factor authentication. So that is also extended use case. Additionally, uh, once you authenticate through mobile connect, you can provision those users to identity server. So let's look at uh, two use cases. So this is what we have looked a uh, little earlier. So this is how you supposed to embed Mobile Connect SDK with your system. So you have a SDK. So you have to embed this SDK with your system. Now with WSO2 Identity Server Connector, so this picture is something like this. So assume your application support for open protocol. So some such as SAML, OpenID Connect, CAS, or it could be any open uh, protocol. So once you support this kind of protocol, then WSO Identity Server can act as a bridge for the Mobile Connect uh, service. So this is the advantage, as you can see, there is no requirement to your application to directly couple or directly deal with any of the GSMA APIs. So you just, as usual, you just, for example, if it is SAML, you just send a SAML request to identity server, then identity server forward create a, uh, first is create a discovery request and discover the mobile operator. Then it will send the uh, open ID request to the particular mobile operator and once it get the tokens back it will translate that token into SAML and get back to your application so basically uh, it is fully transparent from your application so that is the advantage to do that if you assume you your application is already support for any of this open protocol you don't need to do any code level changes that's that is really significant because it will save a lot of your development cycles. So this is the first use case. The second use case is uh, with this uh, mobile connect connector provided by the identity server, you can use it as a multi-factor option. For example, as you can see here, assume as a first step, you can use a simple username password or you can use Google or Fido or social login for example you can use Facebook or you can use Google as a first option as a second option you can use mobile connect in this case also you don't need to couple or you don't need to write any code within your application site as far as it support for open standards such as SAML, OIDC etc. So these are the main two patterns supported by the uh, WSO2 Identity Server Mobile Connect Connector. Uh, from this point onwards, we will look at some of the implementation level details and the uh, practical demonstration. To that, uh, I will hand over to uh, Gayan. Stand over to you. Thank you, Sagar. So, hi everyone. Uh, I am Kayam Gurwardhana, Senior Software Engineer of WSO2 and uh, part of Identity Server, member of Identity Server for a long time. Uh, so, as Sagar mentioned in previous slides, so you may have puzzle on your mind. So, whether to go with SDK approach and or go with uh, WSO2 identity server. So let me explain a uh, real world ex use case. Suppose you have a service provider application called Italiano and it's already communicate to its identity provider using SAML protocol. And um, now uh, 
so yes so now you want to integrate mobile connect with your service provider application um, so isn't this the problem you all have so you you may have uh, some service provider application uh, which are already working with uh, SAML protocol, OpenID or OpenID Connect uh, or WS Federation and now you want to integrate mob uh, mobile connect authentication and uh, your problem is how to do it. So let me, let me explain three simple steps how can you do it with zero code change. So these are the simple three steps. You can integrate your existing service providers with a mobile connect authentication. So the first step is you have to register your service provider application uh, in the identity server. So, uh, so uh, your existing service provider application may support SAML or OpenID Connect or any authentication protocol but that that's not a problem we can support any authentication protocol to register as a service provider and uh, next thing is uh, you have to uh, do the configuration for mobile connect authenticator in the WSO2 identity server and third step is you can just select the authenticator as a mobile connect authenticator so with this simple three steps you don't have to deal with any complexities in uh, mobile connect APIs and stuff uh, you can just integrate your service provider application to authenticate with mobile connect So uh, let me switch into the demo to explain those steps in detail. Suppose this is my service provider application name Italiano and um, I want to log in with mobile connect to this application. I just click login. So it just pop up and ask for mobile number so I added mobile number and to mobile I got uh, USD to approve so I just approved it so you can see I was logged in as a John to this uh, Italiano service provider application. So if I go to uh, WSO2 identity server, so I will log in with admin and username and password. So this is the service provider uh, I registered for Italiano application and it's consume uh, SAML protocol for inbound authentication. And if I go to identity provider side, I have registered mobile connect as federated authenticator. So you can see 
mobile connect authentication configuration so yes and again if i go to service provider site from local and outbound authentication configuration i can set up federated authentication with mobile connect so this is the approach so uh, you don't have to do any code changes in your service provider application just by changing the configuration you can authenticate with mobile connect so if i again switch back to my slides Yes, here we are. So uh, you have a service provider application, uh, Italiano application, which communicate with identity server or SAML protocol, and you have mobile connect authentic authenticator, uh, and WSA to identity server communicate with uh, mobile connect IDP over Open ID Connect protocol. So uh, this is the advantage of uh, using identity server as a proxy in the middle. So suppose uh, after some time, even uh, mobile connect side, if they change some APIs, if they do some modification to APIs, so you don't have to change anything in your service provider application. So from WSO2 side, we will release a new connector so you can just put new connector in the ID server. So you can, like that, you can deal with those complexities without changing your service provider application. So even in some in future, if you want to change your service provider application, suppose if you want to support some other protocol, say uh, you want to throw away SAML and if you want to use OpenID Connect, so you can just you can just do it by changing the configuration and endpoints. So you don't have to worry about uh, mobile connect and other complexities. So that's the real advantage, like using identity server at, at the middle as a proxy. So as the next thing in Sagar mentioned, so if you concern about security factors. Uh, multi-factor authentication is a uh, very essential uh, thing. So then again, the difficulty is uh, finding the second factor. So with mobile connect, so we got real advantage. So we can use this mobile connect authentication as a second factor. So even uh, you to enable second factor so you can you can make simple configuration change in the identity server site and uh, with that uh, you can go with uh, multi factor authentication uh, just by changing the configuration so if i again switch back to identity server so we have uh, multi-step configuration in identity server so so again I went to service provider application and uh, if I go to local and outbound authentication configuration so you can see there is advanced configuration so here I can configure multiple steps um, say in the first step I want to authenticate with basic authenticator so I put basic authenticator and uh, in the second step as a second factor I want to authenticate with 
mobile connect so now you can see in multi step configuration in the first step you will be authenticated with mobile connect uh, sorry in the first step you will be authenticated with basic authenticator and second step you will be authenticated with mobile connect so just update it let me again switch back to the my service provider application italiano application yes so i click login and this time first i have to authenticate with username and password so i entered username and password and in the second step i got mobile connect authenticator so i got a ussd to my mobile so i approve usd so i logged in with uh, i successfully completed uh, both authentication steps username and password and mobile connect authentication so i logged into service provider application as a john as you can see so this is the demo we plan uh, for today with uh, mobile connect authentication so so you uh, if you if you want to uh, download mobile connect authenticator uh, these are the reference so you you can go to our connector store and as sagar mentioned there are 40 like 40 plus connectors so you can download mobile connect connector and try this one so I think uh, that's the end of our demo. So, uh, uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, so, I think now if you have any question, so this is the time. Okay. Uh, there is a question uh, like uh, a gsm connector on your site mentioned is version 510 and 520 but not 530 uh, i think uh, i will we will check on that i think it, it could be a, a mistake uh, for this demo also we use uh, latest version of the identity server uh, for i can i can confirm there is no issue with uh, to support Mobile connect connected with latest version. Uh, it seems uh, we don't have further questions, uh, so I I think it's time to. Okay, so there's another question. Yes, uh, the question is: What must the mobile operator to do provide support for? mobile connect authentication so basically in order to use that uh, the mobile providers has to registered and uh, registered and also uh, ha should have agreement with gsma the gsm is the kind of a governance body for this mobile operator so if they have uh, agreement and uh, registration with gsma and they and they have the kind of infrastructure facility to authenticate web based users basically if they support for open id connect protocol there is no issue uh, for for that you can go to to the gsma website and if you can search for gsma mobile connect they have uh, the country list and also supported mobile operator list to so that you can find out whether uh, who are the supported 
mobile operators in your country for this uh, connector. So other than that, uh, there is no any special support uh, required from the mobile operator side. So this is another question, what limitation exists for the type of handset to be used for mobile connect authentication? Uh, so basically, uh, so there is no any such uh, limitation because if you look at uh, basically uh, your devices, uh, your, uh, for example, there are two types of devices, devices with uh, mobile SIM and devices without mobile SIM. For example, if you use your um, uh, the desktop or laptop applications, uh, they don't usually have the mobile SIM. In such a scenarios, like we did, uh, the, it will pop up a uh, input box to enter the mobile ID. But if you use a device with SIM, the SIM enable uh, to that SIM uh, device to that SIM card, uh, the mobile connect can retrieve the uh, ID. So that means you don't need to enter the mobile phone number. So that is the basic difference. Other than that, there is no any limitation because uh, this uh, GSMA mobile connect uh, service just leverage the, uh, mob uh, the mobile the authentication service already used by the mobile operator. Okay, so with that, uh, let's conclude this uh, webinar. So if you have any further questions, so you can contact us. Uh, you can write to, uh, we have already provided my email address, or you can contact WSO2 to email or any of our uh, social pages like Twitter, etc. So thanks everyone for your participation.